Hi everyone, I hope everyone is fine. From this video, we are going to start a new series and it is about the awesome component of Android Jetpack which is Room Persistence Library. So we will learn how to manage the local database in our application using the Room Persistence Library which is the new thing now. Room also works with SQLite but it gives us an abstraction layer over SQLite which makes the things easier. But still, if you want to learn about SQLite, then you can click on the top right corner of the screen. I have created a complete playlist explaining SQLite in detail. Coming back in this series, we are going to build this application. So let's see it first. So we will build very simple notes application where you can save notes. We can edit the notes and we can also delete the notes. So we will learn all the basic operations that are creating, reading, updating and deleting. And throughout this series we will build this complete application. So we will build this application throughout this series and I hope you are excited about this. So let's get started. Welcome back guys, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. So let's quickly start with the very first question which is what is Room? It is another awesome component of Android Jetpack and it basically is an abstraction layer over the SQLite database and this layer makes the database operation very easy for us. Room also uses SQLite as the database. Then why we should use Room? So here are the advantages of Room over SQLite database. So the first thing is SQLite don't have any compile time checks of SQL queries. So if you write something wrong in your SQL query then you will not get compile time checks for this. But in case of Rooms you will get compile time checks of the SQL queries that you write. So it is very less likely in Room that you will make some errors in your SQL queries. In case of SQLite, updating the database, changing the database schema was very difficult. But in case of Room, we can create migration classes to upgrade our database. In case of SQLite, converting the SQL queries to Java objects is very difficult and it requires too much boilerplate code. But in case of Rooms, mapping the SQL data to Java objects is very very easy and it removes almost the boilerplate code that we had in SQLite database. Now SQLite cannot work with the latest live data and view model things, but Room is built to work with live data and view model. So it is recommended to use Room over SQLite database. Now let's discuss something about the components of Room. So the first component is the database and it is an abstract class that is annotated with a at the rate database annotation and it should extend the room database class. And the next component is entity that represents a table in the database. And finally we have DAO or DAO or data access objects. These are the interfaces that contains functions to access or manipulate our database. So the first thing is database and it is an abstract class that extends room database or inherits room database and above this class you annotate it with database annotation and inside the annotation you define all the entities that you have in your database and then you also define the version of your database. This version is used when you want to upgrade your database schema. Then the database class have abstract functions to give us the DAOs. So for every entity we have the DAOs, the data access objects that contains all the functions to manipulate the database. So we create functions to get all the DAOs here. In this case we have only a single entity and a single function that is giving us the DAO for this entity. The next component that we have is the entity. Now it is a data class and you need to annotate it with the entity annotation that means it is a room entity 
and inside this entity we define all the variables and these variables are nothing but the column of your table. So for this example the table name is user and we have three columns in this table UID, first name and last name. Now if you define this annotation column info then you can put the column name that you want for your database and it is the variable name. Then finally we have the interface user DAO that contains all the functions to manipulate the database. You define an interface and you can name the interface anything but it is a DAO so we have written user DAO and this is very important you need to annotate your DAO with at the rate DAO and inside this interface we define all the functions to access or manipulate the database. So this is how room works we create database entity and DAO these three things. With the help of this figure you can see how room database works. So this is our abstraction layer of room over SQLite. It has the database, the DAOs and the entities. So from the database we can get the DAOs and from the DAOs we can get entities to get and set the fields. So this is how room works. Now if you think that it is confusing then trust me it is very easy. Just follow this series till last and then you will realize how easy it is. So that's all for this video friends I hope you all are excited for this course and if you think that this course is going to help you then please help me back by sharing it with all of your friends learning android development. So thank you guys this is Bilal Khan now signing off.